The Uptown Theater went through a number of different identities in the 20th century. It began as a glamorous movie palace in the 1920s. It then became Philadelphia's premier venue for rising black musical groups in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. At this time, North Broad Street was a thriving business and creative community. After becoming a nightclub and then a church in the 80s, the Uptown closed its doors after a devastating ice storm in 1991. This is, let me tell you something, this is the, the grand jewel of entertainment for black America right here. Started here in Philadelphia with the Uptown. The Columbia Broadcasting System came into our office and said, we have tested all the theaters in Philadelphia and this one is acoustically by far the best. This was in the 1920s. It was a beautiful theater. It had stained glass, uh, panels, backlighted on both sides, had a muralist do a big mural there on, uh, opposite the, the balcony, on the, the balcony lobby. He used wrought iron, he did grill work, he, he, all, all kinds, he brought in every art and craft you can think of. Theaters were very glamorous places to go, especially theaters like the Uptown. When we came to the Uptown, it was really a special occasion and also movie theaters are very ornate they were just beautiful so there was a whole aura you know of of the theater of just being in the theater when i used to go to the uptown i would sit in the audience watching other artists people like james brown and all of them all 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 the, all the great ones that came through there and uh, the audience were uh, at that time he had a full house all the time every show was a full house lines from Broad Street to Dolphin Street around Carlisle just to go in the Uptown. Everybody that was anybody played the Uptown. Like he said, Sarah Vaughn, uh, uh, Sam Cooke, uh, uh, Smokey Robinson, the Chantels, the Marvelettes. They didn't make a whole lot of money, but they wanted to come to Philadelphia to work the Uptown. If they didn't work the Uptown, they wasn't considered a group. I know when we started things here, it transferred to other parts of the country. Usually the first show would start around noon, and we would come down here maybe around nine and actually stand in line to get into the Uptown. And they didn't, and you, they didn't put you out after a show, so you could like stay there. So you would stay all day because each time a new show started, you could get closer and closer to the stage. Well, actually, the audience all we all became friends, you know, because basically it was once they were there for the first show, they would be there all day long, you know. So we got a chance to just meet them and talk to them and find out where they lived, as far as the sections of Philadelphia, and a lot of them were even from Camden and all that, you know, across the river. New Jersey, or as Alfie said, from Bryn Mawr, which is not around the corner from the Uptown, you know. After most of the shows, Sam would play music, and Georgie Woods would call the kids up on the stage. And he would let the kids run up on the stage, as many as could get up there. And then they would dance, and Sam would play the music for them, and oh, you, you, you would be spotlighted. You know, Georgie would have people come up, you know, dance on the stage. So I got my heart up, one time went on up there. <laughs> doing a slot. And it was a, a lady named Miss Pearl who used to cook for all the entertainers across the street. Uh -huh. That's Carlisle show. Street, that's the back street. She used to cook for all the entertainers. And everybody used to go back to the after shows to get the dinner. Go, go back there and order sandwiches. And, and you could like see that. the see the entertainers coming out backstage. He's being modest. This was like Hollywood. I mean all the entertainers was in there. If you wanted to see somebody, come to Don Do Shop. They were here. Everybody. Don't be so modest man. <laughs> 
James Brown, the Miracles, the Temptations, um, basically a lot with the women too. Smokey Supreme, yes. Mookie yeah. Robinson, yeah. everybody. Was here. Right. Who were some of the people you remember? Patty LaBelle, the Marvelettes, you name it, the Dells, Martin Vandellas. Arthur right. Reeves, uh, you had Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Shorels, Chantel. You can go on and on and on and on. You like know, four Tops. Oh man, it was true. It was a thriving area, this block right here, and the Uptown Theater was the main part of the block. A lot of the businesses surrounding the Uptown fed off of the Uptown. Uh, the dance, do shop, the, the bars, the uh, little restaurants and things they had because people would leave the uptown and, and go get something to eat and hang out. So it was a, an entertainment district. Everything was booming. We had booming businesses, doctors, banks, anything around North Philadelphia you could find it. That was back, that was back in the good days. We say the good old days, they were the good old days. Mm-hmm. We realized that the theater is not going to be the way that it was in the past. It's not, it's not strictly going to be an entertainment venue. It's going to have to be a multi-use venue in order for it to be successful. Really nowhere else in America do you have the kind of existing uh, fabric block after block after block that Philadelphia does. Um, and there's no way to recreate that. The success of the city really depends on the reuse, the restoration, the repair, the maintenance, whatever, depending on whatever state these buildings are in, um, that really has to be a critical part of the economic development and the future of the city. It's disgraceful what has happened to it to this point. I think the way to do it is to make sure it's geared toward the people of this community. And that way, if they support you, you can't, you can't fail. Uh, there have been efforts um, to date, you know, particularly John Bowser and others who have worked to uh, begin the revitalization, but it is going to take an entire effort of the community. I think it's the linchpin to the development of North Broad. The Uptown is so much a part of our lives here. It's a part of the identity of this community and so much a part of the identity of families that are here too. This effort is um, an opportunity to, to restore hope and economics to this neighborhood, the jobs that are going to be brought, the industries that may follow behind this major anchor. So bringing back the Uptown is just really going to connect us, you know, all together with the past and, the, you know, the present and also looking forward to the future. Like a lot of people ask me, um, are they reopening? Is it, uh, you know, is it going to be, you know, are they going to start up the Uptown Theater again and everything like that? Like, now it means to me just that it, it must have been a legend back then. See, I didn't know, like, one theater has a big impact on, like, so many people. So the impact that it would have that, hey, the Uptown's opening back up. Whether it's going to be a movie theater or anything. Long as the name, the name carries, just like um, Veteran Stadium carries, the Uptown Theater carries. So, for the neighborhood, it would be a real good thing. Uptown has so much to give to the community. Even though the Uptown looks with the natural eye to be in a very poor state, in order for new birth, everything must die. Uh, a seed has to go into the ground and die in order for the tree to come to bring more fruit. So as the old dies, the new is being reborn. And um, I'm very happy about that.